Hi, I'm Pat Donovan Potts. I'm the stormwater manager with the city of Jacksonville. And today we actually are launching uh, from the USO boat ramp in the small NC State privateer boat. The reason why we're using the privateer boat today is we're going to be traveling up two very shallow creeks, Cheney Creek and Mill Creek, looking at a very common problem in our waterways this year and that is alligator weed. Standing here at the boat dock, you can see behind me, we have put up signs at all of our boat ramps throughout the New River and the White Oak, uh, even in the Cape Fear, because we're battling alligator weed again. We started a program with trying to eradicate this invasive weed. Um, and what we've done is two methodologies. We have put out flea beetles in the past, as well as spraying. So let's go take a look at what alligator weed looks like and where you will find it. These are the, the little flowers that it puts out. And this is what we're actually waiting for to spray is when it goes to flower like that, it's when the leaves are the, at the broadest and we can actually spray more of the herbicide on the actual plant itself when, the, when it's flowering because the leaves are broader. And again, it, this is shorter stubby stuff is the stuff we've sprayed, but believe it or not, it's actually starting to come back. So we're going to have to do a third application to this site. And this is the type of root system that it, it puts out. Uh, it puts out a tubular um, root that also has hair-like roots that hang down. So again, it's a, an aquatic species of weed, an invasive weed. But when it butts up against the land, if you look close, you can see it's migrated up into the cattails and into the sinosauroides. It actually is taking on to land. The worst thing you could do would be to cut this. If you cut this in three pieces, you now have three pieces of this weed that will grow. You'll have three plants instead of just one. That's why you can't cut it or weed eat it or use a lawnmower. If you, if you cut this stuff, you're just creating more plant. The problem is, is it's an invasive species and it will totally outcompete our wetland plants. And what will happen is we'll end up with a monoculture. All we'll end up with is alligator weed. It will totally outcompete all our native species. Alligator weed does not like high salinities. In the last two years, 2012, 2013, our salinities were pretty high. We were close to drought-like conditions off and on throughout the summer. So higher salinities mean less alligator weed. This year, however, we've started out with a boom. We've had a lot of rain this summer, and it's caused the salinities in our creeks, like Mill Creek, to go from four to five parts per thousand down to zero to one parts per thousand. And so we've seen the alligator weed really come back this year with a vengeance. My name is Shannon Myers and I am a stormwater water quality technician with the city of Jacksonville. Um, I've been with this department for about a year and a half, two years. As a boater growing up on the coast, a big thing is these props as they go around the alligator weed, it actually cuts up those tubular roots and it doesn't seem like a big deal, but every time it's separated, you not only have that one plant, you've just broken it down into several smaller plants that can then migrate and block other channels or waterways. You take your boat in, you might put it down at the USO and come up Mill Creek, Cheney Creek. You might have gotten alligator weed in your prop or in a live well that way. Well, if you don't rinse that out, you can take any fragments of that alligator weed and then transplant it to, say you go up to the White Oak River and put your boat in there. So that's another important thing to watch out for and is another big reason why we need to spray for alligator weed to eradicate that problem from spreading not only in our own water bodies, but also surrounding local coastal communities. It, it totally is blocking the channel up there. In order to combat this alligator weed, um, Shannon and I are both certified in spraying um, pesticides and herbicides. 
and we also are certified in, in uh, spraying aquatics, which is actually a subclass A. Part of being certified is learning the proper techniques and the PPE to wear. While spraying for alligator weed, we are required to wear a long sleeve suit top. Then also you want to wear goggles and then also gloves. And the one thing that you can see is there's very little wind today is we have to be very mindful of drift. Drift would take what we're spraying and could put it into the wetlands or it could put it back on ourselves. So with her spraying, we have to be prepared. We don't ever spray in anything more than five miles per hour as far as the wind. If it's 10 or higher, we won't spray. And another component is we have to have 48 hours of dryness. It cannot rain the day that we're spraying or the day after because the surfactant will cause the herbicide to cling to the leaves, but rain eventually will break that down and cause it to fall off of the plants and into the surrounding water. And again, that could possibly uh, kill some of our invertebrates, some of our phytoplankton, or if we happen to have seagrasses on the bottom, that could also um, contaminate our seagrasses. Again, we're here to do more good than harm. So this is our 25 gallon sprayer and what we have in it is a mixture of rodeo and surfactant. The second methodology that we use for eradicating alligator weed is a natural predator that we actually have shipped in from the Everglades down in Florida. The uh, Army Corps and the wildlife officers actually go out on their airboats uh, normally in May, late April, early May, and they will actually use nets to capture the flea beetles and they'll put them in styrofoam cups and they will overnight them to me and we have to put them out that day and what we do is the uh, bigger the mat of alligator weed the more flea beetles we will put out uh, and this is what it looks like he's very small he's a couple millimeters and he is black and yellow uh, racing stripes he's a very cute little beetle um, so what we, you see here in the other pictures is when we actually did a major release back in 2006. You can actually see the flea beetles right here on these leaves. And what the flea beetles do is actually eat the leaves. Then they burrow into the stems and actually lay eggs. The babies hatch out and they continue to eat the stalk and even more leaves. But again, come winter, uh, the winter kills them, but at the same time in the winter our alligator weed dies back as well. Because we've had an explosion of alligator weed this year, we will actually be getting flea beetles in April and May of next year. I'm going to go ahead and place an order. If you have any questions or concerns regarding spraying herbicides or pesticides specifically for aquatic plant life, feel free to contact our stormwater hotline.